So I've looked at my soldier sketches and I've identified one that I, I'm really excited about. So I'm gonna take that and start to develop it into a complete vehicle. The first thing I'm gonna do is establish a more realistic side view with, with some wheels and more realistic proportions. So if you remember in the soldier sketches, I didn't show uh, very much in the way of wheels. I, I just sort of indicated them, but uh, here I'm gonna draw some proper wheels because now we're really starting to think about proportion and stance. But I'm trying to capture that, that gesture that I really liked in that initial soldier sketch. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do what I call a walk around. We're gonna uh, do a series of sketches on one page uh, in which we try to draw the same vehicle in multiple perspectives as if we were walking around the vehicle. In addition to drawing vehicles in perspective with good proportions and good stance, the next important skill that every car designer needs to have is the ability to draw the same car, a concept that they've created, uh, in multiple perspectives. So now I'm starting to lay out a front three-quarter view. I'm setting up my boxes, just like we've always learned to do. As you can see, when you get more and more proficient, you can spend less and less time on the boxes. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm mapping out that side view character line on the body side. And I keep referring to the side view to define where, where the A-pillar belongs, where the windscreen belongs, where those character lines belong relative to the wheels. building up the sketch slowly. As I always say, keep it light until it's right. So now I'm starting to lay out a front end. I want this vehicle to be a battery electric, so I'm giving it a very progressive kind of bottom breather front end. It doesn't need a lot in the way of, of a big cooling opening. But we want to emphasize aerodynamics and width. Putting that powerful rear haunch in there to give it a strong stance. We want this thing to look very athletic. putting in a full width LED lighting feature all the way across the front. Yeah, you can see I'm comparing the lines on the body side in the side view with the body side lines in the perspective view just to make sure everything is lining up in the same way. Just slowly building up the details. Having that center line section is really important in mapping out how the side view translates into the three-quarter view and then using the door cuts as section lines to help the viewer understand the, the sections of the body work. Okay, so now we're going to do a, a rear three-quarter view. Again, trying to capture that same theme, that same design in a rear three-quarter view. So as if we were walking around the vehicle from the side view to the front view to the rear view. We want to make sure that once again all of the character lines map out in in the same place as they do on the side view using the side view as a guide.
So now I'm going to try to figure out what's going on in the rear view. And setting up the wheels, setting up the ellipses. As you can see, I didn't really draw as much of a box this time. And that's because as I'm drawing this vehicle in different views, I'm becoming more and more confident in my understanding of where the main volumes and the main lines go in space. So it's, it's becoming almost muscle memory now. As you draw the same vehicle over and over again in different perspectives, it becomes easier to understand where things belong, where those character lines belong. So one of the things I'm thinking of doing is having a black roof, which, which ends at the rear spoiler area. So you can see the, the rear corner of the, the side glass leads into a line that goes up and over where the top of the tailgate would be. And that's where the roof would break from body color to black. So it gives, it gives the rear end a bit of a, like a roll protection feature. It's sexy and dynamic, but looks protective at the same time. Okay, so now I'm gonna do another front three quarter view. I'm gonna draw it from the, the opposite side. And as I draw it again, there might be some, some subtle differences you know, between the two views. But once again, I'm, I'm learning about this vehicle. I'm getting to know it in all its perspectives. And as I'm doing it, it it's getting better and better. And as you can see, I'm, I'm less and less dependent on how to construct the box. In my mind, it, I, I can see it already, so I can just go, go on and just do the drawing. Drawing that center line, once again, to map out the, the silhouette in the three-quarter view. So in developing any concept, it's important to do this walk around page to really get to know the vehicle that you're trying to create. And you can continue to evolve it and refine it as you go. It doesn't have to be the exact same car every time. It can be slightly different and you might learn new things about that vehicle as you, as you go. And, and yet you can continue to make it better, better and better. So here I'm drawing just a direct front view, I'm trying to make it as symmetrical as I can, but I just want to get a general idea of what the, the front end graphic is going to be. Okay, so now I'm starting to do some, some shading on the body side and, and on the, uh, the front end here. I'm ready to start defining these surfaces. And that's gonna help me down the road once I decide to do some, some renderings, some color renderings of this vehicle. So doing some basic shading in pencil really helps me understand the surfaces that I'm trying to convey. As we remember, there's a horizon line, a ground tone, and a sky tone. So this main character line on the body side really defines that delineation between the horizon line, the ground, and the sky. and doing the same on the other front three quarter view. Just getting those main surfaces 
rendered in such a way that we understand where the horizon line is, where the ground tone is. We're darkening some of the graphic elements like the tires and the rocker area, which has got a protective black finish. Filling in the intake on the front. And putting in some extra detail on the wheels. put some more detail on these lamps. Again, I want to have this full width light blade going across. Gives it a very modern electric quality. Doing the same on the other front three quarter view as well. Now I'm gonna do some shading on the glass area. Again, I wanna convey the idea that the entire roof is, is glass or is blacked out material, which goes all the way to the back of the car. So I'm rendering this as, as a hard reflective surface, with no gradation. So I think I'm gonna put in a little bit of shading on the side view as well, just so we have a complete picture of this vehicle. So as you can see, I'm getting more and more confident in my understanding of what this concept looks like. So I'm putting in darker and darker lines to define those details, and those character lines. So we're starting to have a, a fairly complete picture of this vehicle in all its perspectives. There's enough here that you could give this page to a clay modeler or a digital modeler and they could go ahead and build it in 3D for you. And they would have a very good understanding of what the proportions, character lines and surfaces are all doing in space because there's consistency. It takes a lot of practice to be able to interpret a soldier sketch, turn it into a realistic side view concept, and then to draw that vehicle in multiple views. It takes lots of practice, but that's the next step in becoming a professional automotive designer.